Hello there, Libras. Um, when I was shuffling out these cards, and I, I think uh, I've done, let me see, I've done, this is the 10th video that I've done. And I feel like only three of the signs got multiple images. Uh, you guys, Aquarius, I'm, it might also be Gemini that got multiple images. Uh, so maybe there, it's an air sign thing, but either way, I saw two images um, when I shuffled out the spread for you. So first of all, I see two snow globes, okay? They're in like separate, different worlds. We're talking about like different universes, okay? So like uh, in the first snow globe, I see this uh, this cliff, so it's sort of like the snow globe is standing there, there's snow falling on it, someone shook it, and then it kind of zooms in and it takes us into the universe of the snow globe. And I see a cliff and a lighthouse, and the lighthouse is kind of like uh, moving around, right, rotating. And then you go inside the cliff, um, in, inside the, the lighthouse, the top of the lighthouse, and there's a man, he's, he looks like he's wearing like a, a wizard's uh, robe, or he's wearing a robe. So this seems to me like it's very renaissance, you know, like uh, it might be the renaissance time period. He's wearing like a, a cloak, and he's up there spinning the, the light. And you know the lighthouse is to indicate to the ships that it's uh, approaching a harbor or approaching a landmass, so that it doesn't crash or get into too shallow of a water where it can't get out. So it's like a warning sign. It's a signal. It's a distress signal. It's a warning sign. It's to indicate that, you know, you're getting too close pretty much, okay? So the messages that are associated with this card here is, you know, warning signs, distress signals, or even like an indicator that we're getting too close. And so this man, he's a lighthouse keeper and he's, you know, spinning the lights, scanning the horizons, uh, checking around to see if there are foreign ships, you know, invading the territory. He's very diligent at his task. And then he does it for like an 8-12 hour shift and um, he starts possibly, you know, when the light goes out like around 8 o'clock when the sun sets. And then he works all through um, the morning, early hours of the morning until like 5 a.m. when the sun rises. And so his job is done. And at that time, you see him yawning a little bit, and then he takes this spiral staircase down the tunnel into the bottom of the lighthouse. And that's where he lives. He lives at the bottom of the lighthouse. So his shift is done, he's going home, and I feel almost like a sense of isolation associated with this man because he's on a cliff, he's in a lighthouse by himself, and civilization is like, down below, near the coast, near the harbor, whereas he's on top of this mountain, kind of like living a, a, a more secluded, isolationist, and um, I want to say like a scarce existence, okay? So his world, it, it revolves around this lighthouse, doing his job, going home at the end of the day to sleep, so then you kind of see him in his room at the bottom of the lighthouse, and uh, he has a lot of books with him. So he, he, his form of escapism is through his books, okay? So he, he's like reading uh, stories from like other worlds, like stories of adventure, stories of like the latest discovery found around the world. And so that's his life, that's his routine. And um, when I, I saw this image, I was thinking about um, the word that came up when I saw him, you know, descending the stairs and going to his room and finishing up his shift and now he's He's bound to, you know, repeat it the, the next day His work repeats. He wakes up the next day or he sleeps at uh, During the daytime when the rest of humanity is up and conducting their business So I feel like his timetable is a little bit, bit off. His circadian rhythm might be a little bit off because he's sleeping in the daytime and what I'm seeing is, this man, he, he's, uh, he's doing this because there's a sense of duty and obligation and honor and loyalty to the work that we, we do. And so, in the greater scheme of things, he understands that his job is very, very important, okay? To deter a lot of uh, people on a ship from crashing into shore injuring other people so it's a very very um serious job and when he's going through the motions when you guys are going through the motions it can feel as if 
the work is very mundane. The work is very monotonous. The work might not be the most thrilling, the most exciting. Um, however, the work needs to be done because a lot of people are depending on you. And so I feel like, you know, this is a, a, a duty, an obligation. This is somebody who is not forsaking their duty. And so I feel like for the month of October, um, the sense of duty, the sense of doing uh, what you are entrusted to do, what, what is expected of you, what is professionally expected of you, what is socially expected of you, and a lot of the times you feel like you just want to, you know, break away. You want to break out of the situation and you, you might tell yourself, you know, why am I here weighing out the pros and cons, okay? Two of one, uh, two of pentacles. Weighing out the pros and cons, like why am I still doing this? Is it still bringing me, you know, that sense of dissatisfaction or am I satisfied with the work that I'm doing? Are there greener pastures out there? Are there other jobs? Are there, is there more meaning to the work that I do? So I feel like there's a sense of obligation. There's a, um, a heavy, I almost feel like a sense of duty that you are bound to a specific situation, bound to a job, bound to a partner, bound to a household. So I, I feel like, you know, you're going through the motions and you're starting to question as well, you know, is there more to it than this? And I feel like, frankly, some of you are dreaming for the fantastical, dreaming of like being able to break away, dreaming for like yearning for something else out there, something to, to bring a little bit more excitement, okay? As you can see, this is the fool. He's heading towards the volcano. He wants a little bit more fun. He wants to connect as well. Moving from this fool into the three of uh, uh, cups, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like misreading the cards mainly because I'm, it's really late and I'm a little bit tired and blurry eyed. Um, so this is sort of like, you know, moving to make connections with the community of people. So I do feel a sense of like, you know, being a little bit isolationist, uh, being a little bit secluded. And some of you might have like, for example, um, thrust yourself into a new environment and you're starting to feel like, you know what, I need to make a change. I need to go out and, and meet new people. I need to start making friends. I need to start forming, you know, do more community service or like engage more with the people around me so that I can form new friendships, I can form relationships, I can rejoin the community of people and I can really put myself out there. So this indicates to me, for those who are single especially, uh, getting out there to date, um, networking, um, connecting with your peers, doing community service, attending seminars, and just somehow re-embedding yourself in the community of people. And I'm also sensing as well, like uh, you're doing this in a way where you feel like having alone time is really good for me, but it's better for my emotional and mental well-being to be around other people. As an air sign, we all need to communicate. We all need to exchange ideas. And um, it's not good for an air sign to keep themselves isolated for so long because the thoughts run away with you, okay? Like run away from you. And I also feel like the sense of reality can often get distorted when we are um, like too much on our own and we don't have another person to bounce ideas off of. So air signs constantly need that communication. You need to, and especially a, a dual sign such as yourself, you're better off with people. And I feel like you're starting to feel that tinge, maybe like um, of like loneliness or a situation where you're not completely satisfied with and you feel like you need to make a change. You need to get out there and you need to like reconnect with the community of people. I also feel like, you know, going along with the first message, um, there's a situation here where you're very much bound by your duty and your obligation. But I feel like mentally, you're, you understand the importance of what you're doing. You understand that you, um, you were chosen for this position. You understand that, you know, all the, the different paths and all the different choices that you have made in your past leads you to this common destiny okay the six of cups this is like looking over at all the previous decisions that we've made it brought us here this is like destiny this is where we're meant to be and mentally you understand you know sort of like that person was chosen 
because he's diligent and as a lighthouse keeper, he's averting a lot of crises that could happen in the harbor. And so mentally you understand that you're entrusted with big responsibilities. Um, but then I feel like emotionally, I, I just feel like you're in a situation where you're not really 100% satisfied anymore. And I honestly feel like for some of you, this could be a moral obligation that you have to another person where you took on a task, you took on a responsibility, you took on a vow. It could be like a relationship, you know, where there is marriage, there is like till death do us part. And I don't feel like it was made hastily. I feel like it was well thought out. And you've chosen kind of like the, the best person that you feel would go the distance with you, you know. Uh, this vow was made in a very serious way and it basically indicates, you know, from now until eternity, until death do us part, until, you know, something happens to one of us. So this is like a, a, a moral obligation. This is a duty to ride things out, like to um, get through all the tough times. This is not something that you can make lightly. This wasn't a decision made out of uh, infatuation. It was a sense of duty and it was also a situation where um, at the time and I, I I'm honestly feeling like the combination of all the choices that you've made to in your past led you to this moment and so in a way you felt like it was a little bit like destiny and then I also feel as well that you want a little bit more you want a little bit more out of life and you want to know what else there is out there you want a little bit more excitement you want a little bit more connections and you feel like there's something else that is meant for you and I almost feel like there's a situation here that once upon a time it was enough you know it was like satisfying it was enough and in the present moment what else is new and I got this card for Virgo too so if you have strong Virgo in your chart this might uh, reading might also resonate with you especially if you have like Virgo Sun Moon arising or even uh, like a Virgo Venus sign or even the uh, North Node, okay? What I'm seeing here is you're at this space of tremendous abundance, okay? There's a lot of safety, there's home, family, children, responsibilities even. And uh, we have this new path that's opened up and uh, like I told the Virgo people, um, you have been sitting here waiting for a really long time for this gate to open, for this new path to make itself known, for a new way of doing, for a new drastic change in your life to unfold. And with this gate, okay, this gate has been locked for some time. And you know when it comes to like these really old gates, when you open them, they squeak okay like they they make their their the announcement of their opening very known because it's rusty it squeaks it's gonna make noise it's gonna clatter it's gonna click and clack and so there is definitely something that has opened up has shown itself and I feel like it has shown itself in a very forceful way to tell you that you're no longer stuck here there's a new path opening up for you are you willing to take this path knowing that the majority of the way is going to be uphill? It's not going to be a walk in the park. You're walking uphill. You're walking on an incline. And eventually, it's going to level out. And once you overcome that steep learning curve, it's going to level out. And there might be, you know, a few peaks and valleys along the way where you can kind of run downhill and then peak up again. But I feel like it has made itself known, this new path, this new opportunity that is very big has been shown to you. And so whatever it is, if there's like a sense of dissatisfaction overall that you're thinking about and you feel like something is not really emotionally, it has run its course or emotionally you're drawn to something else you definitely have the sign the signal from the universe for you to go into it okay because i feel like it has made itself known and it is up to you to now finally choose um i do feel 
there is a, a sense of familiarity and comfort associated with where you are right now. And the next step, you know, is going to be a major drastic change that you have to take. And there's a big part about you, about mulling things over. Um, it's like laying out all the pros and cons between staying or taking on that new journey. And then I also feel like there's a lot of fear as well, okay? I keep seeing this volcano, volcano imagery right here. And I feel like, you know, this person might be walking into it. So it's exciting. It's, uh, it's new. It's very enticing. But at the same time, you know, we as an air sign, we like to plan. We like to control things. We like to like um, uh, think about all the possible outcomes before we make a decision. And I feel like that's exactly what you are doing here, okay? You have all of these choices that are laid out ahead of you. And I do sense for some of you, it is only like two choices, do the same thing or break free and take a different path. And then when you have these two choices, you constantly replay them in your head, constantly think about like, uh, what are the possible outcomes? What are all the possible scenarios I'm going to encounter? So it starts out as two choices and then it just like spiral out, out of control and it becomes this multiplied effect where they're like, it's not just about two choices. It's about all the different things that you have to factor into this decision making process. And so it can feel very overwhelming, okay? And um, one thing that I do see for many of you, this is like having a relationship with, I, I do see it in the spread. We have the lover's card, choices, when it comes to lovers, when it comes to relationships. We have the justice card, when it comes to contracts, um, obligations, you know, making like, um, I'm seeing like, signing something and then um, I'm seeing like signing mortgages, signing a vow, signing some type of a contract where you're obligated to do something for a specific amount of time and then wanting to break the contract. Okay, so I, I do see here one scenario that I sense is there might be a job that's very mundane. You understand that you're chosen for the job and it is very important, kind of like with that lighthouse keeper. But it's no longer emotionally fulfilling for you. You, as an air sign, you need to be mentally stimulated. You need to be mentally challenged. So if you're going through the motions as the lighthouse keeper, day in and day out, you have that routine. You wake up, you shine those lights, you avert crises, you know, and then you go to sleep and then the next day it repeats. It's not stimulating, like intellectually stimulating enough for you. It's not exciting enough for you. And I do sense for many of you, um, I'm seeing here a lot of people who might be into, like it, who might have been like actors, um, who might have been um, like models, who might have been painters, who might have been into, you know, the arts and music with this Empress card. This is about beauty. This is about like creativity, okay? Uh, you might have taken like a hiatus, you know, um, two years off, three years off. You might have had children, you might have had to raise them, and you're just like, I'm ready to get back into the working uh, environment. I'm ready to, you know, start my next gig. I'm ready to take on that next big role. I'm ready to, ready to go back to work. So I'm seeing that for some of you, certain scenarios. I'm also feeling as well, there is a relationship here where there is an obligation, but you might not feel like you're, you're you might not feel like the love is there with that person anymore and you're ready to you know embark on a new relationship okay i don't see it as like a temptation i don't see it as like a situation where you're being lured away from you know the one that you love i just feel like a relationship or a situation has run its course and then i'm also seeing a situation where you and another person are financially linked up together. So for example, you might own a, a, a duplex, you might own a condo, you might own property, even though you're not married, you might have some financial entanglements. And it's really hard to extract yourself because the other party depends on you, okay? 
I'm also feeling some people. Um, you might like have children together, even though you're not married. But like there is a some type of a relationship, like a a, a common law type of a, a situation where you're living together, you have children, but legally, contractually, you're not married. And so it's easier. I, I feel like it's easier to walk away. But there's a sense of obligation here as well, where you're not able to make this decision easily. Okay, I have a lot of cards here about mulling over, going with one decision that makes sense, but the other decision gives you a lot more of a an emotional pull. And then I also feel like you know you're playing out the fantasies in your head. You're playing out all of these fantasies, all of these scenarios. And wondering what your life could be, so I don't see like you know you acting on it. I just see you mulling things over and and feeling like I need to you know do this. I need to 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 make this change. And once I make this change, it's going to be so much better. So that's all the messages that came bundled in that first snow globe. Okay, the I, so I feel like the reading is kind of split like this. And for some of you, you might only be dealing with this situation. For others of you, you might only be dealing with this situation. Okay, so the the next snow globe. So we zoom in to the lighthouse, and then we kind of zoom out, and the snow is falling in that first snow globe, and then we transition to this second snow globe, and it's a very cartoony, you know, very cartoony uh, image here. I'm almost getting like a Tom and Jerry, you know that that cartoon with the cat and mouse um, energy. Okay, so I, I feel like they don't speak much in that cartoon, so it's just noise. It, it's just like a, it's like almost like a silent film. Um, so it's a silent cartoon, and what I'm seeing is I see a little dog house, and I see like a, a big dog that's chained up inside the dog house. So basically, he's an outdoor dog. Um, He's got a, like a, a plate of food with like a bone in it, right? And he's out there with a chain around his neck, and so basically he's guarding the house. Okay, he's guarding the house from from thieves. He's guarding the house from delinquents. He's he's just you know a guard dog. He's buff and muscular, sort of like that dog in Tom and Jerry for those who have watched it. Um, and I feel like you know the the dog looks very sweet, and he looks a little bit like sad. Okay. So he might have grown up. His whole life was just, you know, duty and obligation. I have a duty to protect this house. And the thing about dogs is that、um, they're very loyal. They're very loyal, and、um, you know, they're they they do what they're told. They're very, very, very eager to please, right? To please their master, to please whoever is feeding with them, to please whoever is around them. And so you have this sense of like, you know, wanting to please, wanting approval. Um, it's like you you sit wherever you're put, okay? Like you you are when you're entrusted with a duty, you do it to the best of your capabilities. It's almost like、um, pre-programmed to 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 do something, a pre-program with an affinity for something. So I feel like some of you are、um, like you have a lot of natural talents, and I feel like. There might be things that you want to do emotionally. You're very, very drawn to it, but I feel like you're the the way that you have lived your life. You've chosen a different path where it suppresses those things that you want to do, and then you walk the straight and narrow path. So, for example,、um, I have the Justice card here, and this is、uh, greatly about contract law legality. Okay, so I feel like for some of you, most of you guys. Are um would be amazing lawyers, okay? So I feel like you are you might have you know artistic talents, okay? And then you know parents whoever told you along the way growing up, oh you're not going to make money as an artist, right? And you should pursue law school. You're so smart and you're so studious and you're just going to be like your your insights and your intuition and your ability to articulate your thoughts and your your mind is just so sharp. You should be a lawyer. So you grew up. You you went to law school. You became a lawyer, and you're just like, I wish I could draw again, you know. And so I'm feeling here about you know taking the path that is expected of you versus the path that brings you a lot of emotional 
satisfaction. Okay, so I feel like there's a sense here with with this, you know, this dog that's like made into a guard dog. We all know Libras are like the most diplomatic signs. You guys are not biters. You guys are not barker. You guys are very gentle, diplomatic. Your voice is like syrupy sweet, and you know you don't have a mean bone in your body. And yet, if you're made to be a guard dog, if you're made to, you know, just walk the perimeter of the yard. And not be able to explore and come and go as you please, and just you know, if you're thrust into a role and that that's your world, it can feel very very limiting. It can feel very depressing, pretty much. You're not living up to your capability. So I definitely feel a situation here where you really need to reassess. You have so much talent, so much potential. Don't get yourself pigeonholed into one path. Because that's what's expected of you. Because growing up, people have told you, "You're really good at this. You should do this." Like, I feel for many of you, it's time to experiment a little bit. Do a myriad of tasks and skip and jobs to figure out what's a good fit for you. Because I feel like you might be wanting to seek that approval. You might not want to, you know, go against the tides. You might not want to. Um, you might just, you know, take the path of least resistance without exploring other options. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm not done with that image yet. So let me just get it out before I forget, because there's a point here and there's a, a connection between the two, as you can see already.、Um, the dog looks sad. Okay, he he looks sad. He's.、Um, I feel like you know he he he's not a he's not a mean dog. He just wants to be indoors with the the. The、um, the warmth, being petted, having you know, guarding over children, even、um, getting like、uh, you know, getting to sleep in a warm bed, not having to deal with the outdoors and the the elements, and not having to you know, constantly be so vigilant and amped up just in case there are robbers, there are thieves, or there are intruders. In the yard, so I feel like there's a situation here where you're constantly in a work environment, or you're obligated to be really on high alert all the time, and that's really bad for our, our adrenal gland. That's just really bad for our cortisol level, like the cortisol level spiking, and so you're just like, there's a better way to do this. There's a, a a better job out there. There's a better situation for me to be in. I don't need to be in a situation where I'm constantly, you know, under pressure. I'm constantly hyper vigilant, and I'm constantly under stress. Okay, and then I feel like for some of you, there might be a lot of stressors in your work environment, and you might be thinking about taking a sabbatical. Okay, so some of you could be high power executives. Some of you could be like. Um, lead attorney. Some of you could be run your own law firm. Some of you could be,、um, uh, you know, in a situation where you're competing with a lot of people in order to make partner. Some of you could be in like private practice and like the everything is dependent on you. And so there's a situation here where there's a push and pull. Push and pull here. Tug of war. This is the justice card, by the way. And with Libras, you guys are very, very much into balance. When one area of your life is not going well, the other areas can can be、uh, thrown off. And you don't want to be in a space where you're competing, where you're stressed out, where you're comparing yourself with other people or being compared to other people, where you're not able to find that inner peace. And so there's a situation here where it's like. I feel like it's wreaking havoc. Three of Swords. It's wreaking havoc on your own sense of emotional balance. I feel like you might be dealing with a person who's quite combative. This could be in your work environment, in the home, in a relationship. They could be a little bit combative. They could be like you know competitive. They could be nitpicky. They can be you know very harsh with their words. And so you might feel like you have to you know. Walk around on eggshells, tiptoeing, not wanting to make too much noise, not wake up the beast. You know, like it's like tiptoeing, and I feel like it's just not a good space for you to be in because it's not in alignment with your peace and and balanced, loving nature. 
and so you realize that you know there's there's something wrong here and you realize that it's no longer bringing you that emotional satisfaction you realize it's lacking in warmth and support and so you might stay in a situation out of that sense of moral duty but it's been very very hard it's been draining on you emotionally and you're no longer emotionally invested in it so we have some major decisions that we need to make here with this lover's card this is charting new territory okay taking the path uh, that is brand new. It might not be completely smooth. It's a little bit more turbulent and there's a lot, a lot more like a steep learning curve. There's a lot more to be explored. There's like a new territory waiting for you up ahead. And charting, un, un, uh, like it's like uncharted territory or charting into the unknown or wandering into the unknown and understanding a situation might be laced with new adventure all could be very exciting but all could be very um i want to say like that emotional up and down okay so you're ready for something new you're ready for whatever it is you feel like you don't know what to expect but either way you know that status quo is not working for you anymore you need a change of scenery you need something new and so those two snow globes okay and um, the whole concept with snow it, it just feels to me like um, you know like whenever I look at snow globes I get a little bit sad because I feel like the, the that universe inside a snow globe it's so insulated it's so singular it's so like disconnected from one another so I feel like you know you have a cartoony world here and then you have like um, a more like renaissance you know type of a world and those worlds don't connect okay so I feel like you have been existing in a situation where you you might lack that emotional connection with other people you might not feel emotionally connected to others the way that you want whether it be people in a job, whether it be your, your relationship partner, or the people around you, even the children. So I feel like there's a, an emotional dissatisfaction, there's an emotional disconnect. And I feel like you're on your path to finding something new that will, will kind of like fill in that void. And you're starting on your journey to figure out what exactly it is. Um, I do feel there's a huge relationship vibe coming in in this spread for many of you and I'm sensing like you know a, a situation where some of you might be attached you might be attached to one person that you feel is your soulmate and um, the relationship is stable and it's very solid it's very pragmatic as well and there's a lot of things here that is wound up in moral duties and obligation and then there's another situation that's promising something brand new even a new love offer that's coming in and I feel like you're in a position where you might need to make a choice here about how to proceed forward how to divide up assets how to financially emotionally and physically extract yourself from a situation that's no longer serving you so that you can move on to something else that speaks more to your heart uh, chakra okay um, I'm also getting here, you know, like uh, social expectations, approval, and things like that. That's that's like kind of keeping you in in place, keeping you stuck. And I feel like you are becoming aware that these restrictions are not real, and you're starting to figure out that, you know, the the passage of time, the change in the season, the snow falling in the snow globe, right? And you're starting to want to, um, it's like your world, your universe is very contained, it's very safe, but at the same time, it's not super exciting. And so you're looking for a way out. That's what I'm feeling here. I hope the reading is helpful. And for those of you who are dealing with this energy, I hope the reading resonates with you. I hope that it has provided you with a little bit of um, clarity and guidance into this situation so then you can figure out the next steps that you need to take okay i'm going to leave it at that um for those who have been emailing me i've, I've gotten a lot of um emails from a lot of sagittarius 
and Libras and Aquarius too regarding you know private readings and when the readings are going to be up. I'm not doing private readings anymore. I do have a colleague that is in uh, California. She is a phenomenal psychic. If you guys are interested in a reading, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. Her name is Bridget. Um, I've included a link to the to her website in the description box below, so check her out. I recommend that you get a reading with her if you're looking for, you know, uh, if you're going through this in particular, you don't know which path to take. I don't feel there's a right or a wrong, but I do feel in life there are situations that will open the door, like the, the doors will open when the time is right, and I especially feel like we're not meant to stay in one place, we're meant to grow, we're meant to develop to the best of our capabilities, and I feel like as a Libra, you guys understand that concept. You don't want to be bored out of your mind, you need the mental stimulation. So if you feel like you've already learned everything there is to learn in, a, in an environment, it's time for you to move on to the next thing because you guys, your minds are so sharp that I feel like you're wasting your mental agility and your mental powers in a situation where you're no longer learning. Does that make sense? I hope you appreciate that message and I hope you make your choices and decisions accordingly, okay? Um, I wish you all the best and I hope the reading is helpful for you uh, in the month of October. I will be back next month. Take care of yourself.